All right, guys, this is a deck that uh, I haven't done on this channel in a while, but I think there's a new card in Rota that made this deck absolutely insane. And I think people forgot about it or are not thinking about it, which is why I wanted to showcase this deck and show you why this deck could be insane. And the deck, obviously, that I'm talking about is Dinomorphia. It's Morbin time, baby. This deck is actually really cool now. Yes, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. It loses to Impulse, which is relevant in this format but it does not lose to Fualos and I was I've been kind of trying to cook decks up that don't lose to Fualos per se unfortunately you know Impulse is just an insane card but uh, this deck is insane and a lot of people are not ready for it being able to set like four traps is really really good and then cards like evenly matched are not as popular in this format so uh, you are in a better position in that sense right Lightning Storm is also not as popular unless it's specifically against a Tempai matchup but you have other ways to beat the Tempai matchup anyway so uh, I'll talk about that when we get into the profile with that being said though make sure to like and subscribe if you guys do enjoy these videos and let's get right into today's deck profile. So, we are playing three Theresia, the best card in the deck. Hopefully, we get one more name in the future, but for now, we're just playing three Theresia, two Diplos. For anyone who doesn't know, Theresia is going to set a trap for you. Honestly, this kind of, you just play it for the fusion summons. This You don't want to draw this at all. Uh, this is your best normal summon, of course. Um, and the thing is with this deck, because you're setting up all of your traps to fusion summon on your opponent's turn, you're not really losing to Fualos, because as soon as they summon something, you can activate your Frenzy and your other traps. So... You're never going to lose to follow us on this deck, which is really nice. And uh, there's a lot of setup in this deck as well. So these are the monsters that you're playing. But for the rest of the Dynamorphia cards, we are playing three Frenzy, three Domain, two Alert, and three Intact. And the reason I'm playing these ratios, I don't like playing Brute. I don't like playing Sonic in the main deck. I don't like playing those cards. And the reason I don't like playing those cards is they have to offer a, a, a Dynamorphia card as a tribute to do anything, which kind of sucks. So you're not playing enough Dynamorphia names to begin with. And I don't want to tribute off my Rextrum. Like I never want to tribute that off. Like it's not good. Uh, Alert can summon Rexstrom back, yes, but it's like, why would I ever want to get rid of my cards just to pop a card? At that point, like, Rexstrom's just a better card anyways. So, I don't like playing Brute, I don't like playing Sonic, it doesn't make sense to me. These are the best cards. Intact helps because Ash is another thing that these kinds of cards lose to, but Intact kind of stops Ash, kind of stops a lot of monsters' effects. And this doesn't require you to tribute a card, you just have to control a face-up Dynamorphia card. So it doesn't even have to be a monster. If I go activate Frenzy and they go Ash, I go Intact to negate the Ash, right? So, these are all the Dynamorphia cards, you kind of want to just play the best ones. Uh, this kind of helps you turns two and turns three to summon monsters back if they break your board or just help you push for game as well so keep it as minimal as possible you don't want to play the bad ones because you want to play a lot of non-engine that help you kind of win games and the best non-engine in this deck because of rota is three impulse this deck is all dark monsters you don't care about the impulse restrictions impulse is one of the most broken cards to come out in the game i did say earlier that this deck loses a little bit harder to impulse but it also can play impulse which is something that's really good in my opinion this format comes kind of down to if you can play around cards like furrows if you can play around cards like impulse but also your capability of playing these cards and the fact that this deck can play this card not only is it a hand trap for you which is nice but it's also a card that you can set if need be right and then you're also playing three infirm and three ash nine hand traps essentially that you're playing i think ash is just really good because it gives you access to psychic and punisher in the extra deck so i still like playing ash i still like playing one of the level three tuners but in general i think imperm and impulse and specifically impulse just such an insane card in today's format and it just kind of boosted this deck without actually people talking about it or knowing about it right so these are these are really really powerful cards over here and then for the trap cards we're playing a ton of traps so we're playing two trap trick to get us into kind of our trap cards we're playing three ferret flames now this is kind of our win condition against a lot of different decks ferret flames what it does if you guys don't know is um you kind of shuffle back cards from your opponent's um your monsters up to they basically have to control monsters with less life points than you have so to make it make sense if i have a thousand life points they can only control monsters that have up to a thousand attack and if all of their monsters are over a thousand attack everything gets shuffled back why is that really good well in the tempai matchup you can imagine you are bringing your life points down so much that when in the tempai matchup they're doing anything even if they try to quick sync or whatever their frame resolves everything is getting shuffled back so you're never losing the tempai matchup with this card if you think about the snake eye decks or all of the meta decks right now fairy flames kind of breaks all those boards and that's why i really like playing this card because it it, it helps against everything it just beats everything the only thing it doesn't beat is like Ubel when they have like a zero attack phantom of Ubel, which kind of sucks but zero attack phantom of Ubel is also never beating me so it doesn't matter as much right what Nightmare Fang. What? Nightmare Fang. Yeah, but they have to attack into my monster. Okay, you know what? Shut up. I don't care about Nightmare Fang. Stop. Ubel's not beating me. Anyways, the reason Ubel's not beating me is because we're playing this card! The Ruma Cannon, okay? So the Ruma Cannon is actually really good as well because not only is Ferret Flames a board breaker for you, this is kind of a board breaker for you as well. The Ruma Cannon is just an absolutely insane card. I hate that these don't match. I'll do that one day but uh yeah absolutely insane card definitely wouldn't recommend playing two i kind of even could see this playing three of honestly it's, it's really that good but uh, at least two is enough uh because you can trap trick for it which is nice 
And then I'm playing three Judgment. Judgment, unfortunately, is the card that like is only good going first. Unlike these cards over here, which going second, these cards are good as well. This is not as good going second, but I still like playing it because it just synergizes so well with the strategy, halving your life points and whatnot, that uh, you still want to play it in the main deck, I would recommend. I wouldn't say side it. Because of Impulse 2, we can't play really Wannabe. Going second, you could Wannabe uh, on your opponent's end phase and then get to this. But unfortunately, like right now, you can't really do that with Impulse. But I think Impulse is just so strong. So anyways, I would still play these. And then lastly, we're just playing one Anti-Spell and one Rivalry. Uh, these are good cards in today's format. Anti-Spell specifically is insane in today's format. And then Rivalry is really good as well because all the Snake Eye decks, all of the... This is only not good into Tempai essentially because all of the decks that go into the extra deck, they're playing different types of monsters. So Rivalry is really good in today's format as well. Uh, so that's kind of it for the trap cards here. Again, if you draw these, you draw these. If not, it's cool. These cards are all trap trickable, which is nice, these ones. And then these are kind of like your main win condition over here. Because then you set up one of these guys and you're going to be going for game anyways, right? So that's all your trap cards over here. And then to round things off, I'm playing one called by, one pot, and one prosperity. So I guess two pots. The reason I'm playing only one of this, I don't want to ever see this more than once you're not really summoning on your or special summoning on your turn too much anyways prosperity of course is really good and then call by the grave to save you from tra uh, traps and stuff or hand traps i should say so that's really it 40 cards in the main deck i really really like this main deck this is post deck profile spanko over here and i want to talk about a card that you guys might be wondering why are you not playing and the card is cross out because i talked about how uh bad impulse is against thanomorphia and i'll be quick here so my logic for not playing cross out you could play it on the side that's the one thing you get with where one area you guys can play it but my logic for not playing cross out is that it doesn't make sense to play cross out for a single card if i lose to impulse i lose to impulse but there's variance in that because if my opponent has impulse and i don't have cross out i lose anyway if i have cross out and my opponent doesn't have impulse then cross out is a dead card in my hand and so there's just too much variance of it not being relevant in a deck where you can cross out like three or four different cards it's good in a deck like dynamorphia where there's only one real cross out target like you could cross out ash but it's not as good because you already have outs to ash like called by the grave outs to ash dynamorphia intact outs to ash so it's kind of like you already have outs to ash you don't have an out to impulse so if you're playing cross out for a single card i just don't think it's that worth it i don't know if that makes sense but that's my logic let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think uh moving on to the extra deck though i think this extra deck is really good now the thing is there's a lot of space in this extra deck where you can play cards like super poly you can play a bunch of other things i'm personally not playing them so you guys are going to see that you have some stuff in this extra deck that you don't typically see in Dynamorphia, but it just works. So three Rexstrom, three Catrogena, that's 100%. Like, you got to be play, playing three and three. Now, typically, people just play two of the Stealth Bergia. I'm actually just playing three. The reason I'm actually just playing three is because it's usually just Prost Fodder or something like that for me. Or if I need to rip it, like, my opponent rips it or whatever. Like, I have space, right? So that's why I'm playing the third. It's not like you need to play three. Usually, the ratios are just two. But why not, right? Because you're not playing Super Poly. You're not playing the Zark package here. Like, this would obviously be a Zark spot, obviously. But we're not playing the Zark package. I think that package just really loses to a lot of things in today's format so that's why i'm not playing that package but then we're playing one dolka one logia for when you can make them one psychic and punisher if you guys don't know you make like rexstrom plus like an ash into this and kind of helps you go for game one exoton knight for when you're forced to go second and then i really like this package it's kind of like an otk package raiders knight and arc rebellion so raiders knight is two level four dark monsters which your diplo and your theresia both are and then essentially you can just rank it up into this and then this has an effect where you can detach a card uh it has a dark exes monsters under it which it does essentially what this is going to do for you is it's going to gain attack of all the monsters on the board and it's also going to skill drain the whole board so it just becomes like a 10,000 attack monster sometimes and you can just push for a game with this so kind of like an otk package for you i was considering like stuff like uh the utopia double package as well but it's like why would i have to play a brick when i could just play this package which is better so yeah 15 cards in the uh in the extra deck at the end of the day the only ones that you ever actually need are your dynamorphia ones because you're typically winning off of those the other cards are just kind of like toolbox for you right now the side deck i really like the side deck three shifter what is so uh, wait a second Spanko, why are you playing shifter don't you want your traps in the graveyard yes however when you're going second who cares you go shifter let's say let's say you're going second you side these in you because you know you're going second like game two game three you know you're going second side this in you shift your opponent they're like okay i gotta pass and you're like okay set five pass and now by the time it goes back to their turn like you essentially stop them from playing and then you were able to set up something like whether you set up your traps or whatever so i really really like shifter in that sense this deck also doesn't really have a normal summon outside of theresia so going second because the trap cards do the thing that theresia does for you anyways you just play two uh three lava golem lava golem's insane in today's format breaking the azamina boards breaking the bell boards there's so many boards that this card just breaks so it's insane three evenly matched i really like evenly matched you're not gonna really go for game all the time or otk with this deck so just being able to break boards going second is important again this deck the fact that it can play impulse impermanent ash is really good because you kind of have inherent good cards for going second and like the ferret flames and daruma cannon are not bad going second either but uh if i'm forced to go second i want to see these cards and just blow up my opponent and then for going first i'm playing 3d barrier i already have like ferret flames is good into tempai but uh why not have a better card into tempai 
two of the different dimension ground so this is really good because it kind of acts like shifter when you're going first but the thing is with this you can trap trick it and then on top of that it's only monsters get banished so the really nice thing about this is if you set it up essentially you don't care about your monsters getting banished the traps being in the graveyard is more important anyway so two different dimension ground and then lastly i'm playing one sonic i know i talked about how much i hate this card but i had one more slot in my side deck and i think this card's okay when you're going first you can side it in if you know your opponent's going to be playing board breakers like lightning storm evenly matched and stuff you don't want to lose to those cards so sonic kind of just helps you in that sense like it's, it's just a side deck card it's not a main deck card it's not main deck worthy but i really like this again sky side decks are always going to be up to you per personal preference and what your locals is like but i really really like the side deck so that is it for today's profile Dynamorphia guys This deck is actually low-key a sleeper I think this deck is actually low-key good You have Impulse, you have Access to Impulse You have uh, Skill Drain on board with Rextrum You have Shifter in the side deck Like this kind of does everything that the meta does not want to see Which is really good Like Skill Drain, Shifter, Impulse And then a bunch of just Ferret Flames and the Ruma Cannon Just really annoying cards And you can sneak a lot of wins with this deck So I think this deck is actually as powerful as it ever was it doesn't lose to Qualos it loses to Imperm, or not Imperm, but Impulse, unfortunately. But you know what? You can play Impulse, so that's not too bad. But uh, yeah, with that being said, thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy today's video. If you guys want to stay tuned to more videos like this one, you guys stay subscribed for that. Thank you, cameraman, for being the best cameraman on YouTube. And with that, guys, thank us. I know. Peace.